Who welcome to a Christmas edition of the Good Guys podcast. My name is Brandon Dixon. I am a happily married man and a humble father of four. And as always, I am joined by none other than the Honorable, the Reverend, Slim Rev, a.k.a. Joshua Ezzy. What's good, PD? What's good, man? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and yours. Thank you, brother. Merry Christmas to you too, man. The reason for the season mm. will always be about the birthing of the Savior. No happy holidays, bro. Mm-mm. Don't try to take this from us. Merry Christmas. As the great psalmist John P. Key once said, there would be mm. no Christmas without you. Mm. I tell you, no Christmas without him, bro. Um, so we've got a great episode today. I'm excited about it. We're going to go ahead and get into that in just a second. Um, but before we jump into it, um, we want to thank our subscribers who are already subscribed for Rocking with the Good Guys podcast. And we also want to encourage those of you who have not yet subscribed to the Good Guys podcast. What are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe yeah. button. Hit the bell so that you get post notifications so you can join the Good Guys pod fam. We have right? goals, man. We have goals. We need you. Absolutely. All right. Get engaged. Hop in the comments. Interact with us. You know what I mean? Leave a comment. Share the video, uh, the videos if you enjoy them on other social media platforms. Help us out here at the Good Guys Podcast, girl. That's what you can get the Good Guys Podcast for Christmas. That's right. All right. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started, as we customarily do, with the weekly airing of grievances. Mm-hmm. I've got one, Josh, today. It's um, it's kind of been a controversial uh, topic. Uh, it was a controversial ad that came out a few weeks ago. I think it was maybe around Thanksgiving. And it kind of went viral. Okay. And I feel like we should talk about it. All right. I'm ready to go. It's the Peloton ad. Now, for those of you who have not seen the ad, I don't know if it'll let me add the ad to our podcast without getting copyright um, infringement uh, threats. But if not, if you haven't seen the ad, it's a, a husband buys a Peloton, which is a piece of exercise equipment for his wife. And she, I guess, over the course of the next year, you know, works out, um, sees results, says that it changed her life, <coughs> things like that. But I think a lot of people kind of would, it was kind of cringy because of the faces that she was making. It, it kind of seemed like, you know, she was being forced um, you know, to exercise or maybe that he was, and people complained that he was implying that, you know, she needed to work out and things like that. And, you know, that led to, you know, fat shaming, you know, uh, uh, people, you know, talking about fat shaming and things like that. So, you know, I, I just, I just thought like, what, how would that go over if I got my wife a Peloton or a piece of exercise equipment? For Christmas without her asking for it, because I don't think this is something that she asked for in the commercial. Hmm. And I think that's my earring of grievance today, Josh. Like, how come how come he can get away with that? When I don't think and I don't know if it's a cultural thing or what the case may be, but I don't think me and you could get away with giving our wives a piece of exercise equipment for Christmas. Um, hmm. if I nope. were to give my wife a Peloton for Christmas, she's not going to smile and say, a Peloton? She's probably going to slap me. First off, the, the name Peloton, you know, like I thought it was a sponsorship for the Pelicans. I didn't know what that was, bro. F- furthermore, I can't afford a Peloton. That's that's number two. You know, those things are expensive. <clears throat> but if I were to buy my wife a Peloton, she would curse me. But, but she would probably. Keep, did, keep she might. Real. 
She might. Yeah, she will. She probably she would might. curse me out. Yeah. Yeah. On Christmas Day. Um, you know, how can how can he get away with that? Because I can't. You know, and ladies of the Good Guys podcast, I guess you'll have to help me out. Is that like is that seen as offensive? BD, um, I I just don't understand why wives don't want us to see greatness in them. You know, like 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 because of the reactions that comes from wives or women at times, men are withheld for for enhancing the future of their woman. They fat shame me. They fat shame us. Don't eat that. Oh, haven't you had enough of that? No. That's fat shaming. You don't believe I have self-control? Why can't I get another plate of macaroni and cheese? Why can't I get another plate of dessert? Why why are you limiting me? This is true. Come on, man. What about the things that contribute to my health and well-being? Why can't I take a nap in the middle of the afternoon, even though your in-laws are here and you want me to spend time with them? I need to take a nap. See? Okay. Our Peloton is the bed there you go so 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 why why can't we do the same because it's easy for you guys to put limits on us i mean like the limits they put on us robs us of our joy like like obligations hey do can you do this for me and then and and smile when you're around the family and 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 play with the kids and and you know uh Put that brownie down. I think you had enough. No, I didn't have enough. I'm eating all these brownies for everything I had to sacrifice this whole year. <laughs> I don't understand. Like, I mean, I understand how ladies can feel, you know, be- because that's the sensitive area, you know, the body, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a lot of gifts I think men want to give their wives that, you know, that will help help the union. Help the help the marriage. Help help us both enjoy each other. You know, right? I mean, how long? Uh, how far does this the, the the reach extend? Like, is it limited to physical gifts? Like, what if I buy my wife a book on oh, shoot. <laughs> how to cook? Like, what if I buy her a cookbook? Is that offensive? Is that saying that she can't cook? I mean, one could infer that, but maybe I maybe I'm not trying to say. You know, that her macaroni, you know, uh, uh, needs, you know, some help. Maybe I'm just saying, hey, I want you to get better. I want him, you know, I want growth for you. That's all we're asking. Maybe I want to take it to the next level. Can we not move forward in our in, in our in our marriage and in our walk? BD, what you saying right there is so profound. Just because you're at a level of greatness doesn't mean there's not another level of greatness to achieve. We, us as men, we want to give gifts that keeps on giving. So if I give you a cookbook, that is not implying you can't cook. It's just saying that my taste buds has gotten used to this level. <laughs> <laughs> and we need to come to another level. We need to come to another level. That's it. That's it. That's it. We're not saying, we just saying we enjoy this level, but you know, just because I got us a full subscription to the Food Network doesn't imply. <laughs> I just, you know, we're not saying our wives are bad cooks. We, as men, we are programmed us solid good guys are programmed to be better. That's right. You know, like right now, BD and I, we talk on the phone how we can make this podcast better. Because you know what, these kind of revenue streams, these kind of idea streams, helps the family. I'm always looking to improve in my writing, improve in my speech. Because of the, the, of the money and the opportunities and the impact it can bring. That's right. If we cannot be stagnant, mm-hmm. then you shouldn't be stagnant. That's right. Just because I schedule a one-on-one Skype session with my mother uh, to help <laughs> <laughs> to teach you how to make the roast <laughs> doesn't mean that your roast isn't good. It doesn't mean it's not good. It just means that you know what I see potential in you. I see potential. The that's same a thing good I see. That I see potential in you. I see greatness. Why shall we stay here and be average? I see greatness in you, babe. It's right there. Okay, the taste <laughs> is everything, but there's one 
specific seasoning that you're missing, and I think my mother could bring it out of you. Can bring it? It's not that it's not in you. You just need mentoring. You just need coaching. See, the Peloton comes with the video screen with the instructors wow. that are coaching wow. you to greatness. To greatness because we need you. We need you to be, well, well, you know, stamina. You know, we need, we need, we need, um, you know, when you have babies, when you have like, like we, we need you to be great. And this doesn't, great. and I think it's a hard conversation for men to have because sometimes we avoid conversations because of the reactions. See, see, ladies, can I ask you a question? Are you truly ready for your husband to be honest? Can women, and no, I'm not going to want to say women, but can, but can some ladies really handle honesty? Because y'all are honest with us. If we come to you and say, you know what? Mm, I see greatness. I see potential. We giving you something that may imply that that we're ready to take it to the next notch. Are you okay with the truth? Because the truth will set you free. The truth will set us free, specifically us men free. And I think it. I mean, I think it goes both ways. I mean, oh, but... both ways. No, we, 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 of course, BD. Of course, because us men, we have to lead by example. You can't give your wife a Peloton if you ain't running no marathons if you ain't in the gym yourself you can't so we have to make sure now that's one thing fellas do not give a gift to your wife that you haven't given to yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't give a gift to your wife and you 450 pounds don't give her a peloton and right. you 450 bro right absolutely i think the greater question here is when it comes to christmas gifts mm -hmm. is it okay to get um <clears throat> I guess you could call, you know, like self-help gifts, gifts or, or need-based gifts, or do you need to always buy like want gifts? Be and I think us as men, we're more wired to be more practical on the practical side of things. So I think it's, it's, you know, kind of like our train of thought goes, Hey, that's right. this is something that she could use. Maybe that, you know, she, maybe she needs more so than something that she wants. Dang and I don't think that's kind of how women view it. I think they prefer want gifts. And, you know, that's something that you have to, you know, you kind of, you have to balance out. You know, yeah. maybe maybe Valentine's Day you got her a need gift. Maybe for a birthday you got a need gift. Maybe at Christmas, hey, maybe I can slide this, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a want gift on the other yeah, holidays. Yeah. Maybe on Christmas I can slide in a need gift, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Valentine's Day you can't give a need gift. You no, gotta you, give you a can't. want gift. No, Absolutely. no. So, so fellas, erase that off your list. No, don't even try. Not, don't even try. You're gonna be left at at the table, right? And she's gonna have that stank face because if y'all married, she can't go nowhere. So she's gonna give you that stank face. And I think birthdays, you kind of want to stay with the want gifts too. That's their special day. That's your That's special, special day. That's yeah. But Christmas, it seems like the perfect time for a need based gift, if you ask me. I, I think I think there's nothing wrong with the need gift because I think the older you get and when you're married, all that perfume stuff, you know, that's cool for Valentine's Day. Smell. But 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 the new year is upon us. Huh? Christmas perfect gifts. Timing. Christmas Day is the perfect time to give need not need. Yeah. Need self-help gifts because it, you could guys, it's how you spin it. Babe, you know the New Year's coming. Baby, this 2020, I want to see you differently. <laughs> Ooh, that's baby, a line I, from baby, the line. Baby, listen, this is our decade. This is our first, this is our decade where we can really make things new. So I see things that, baby girl, I just want you to see. That's right. This is where I see. See, this is what you do, fellas. When you give her the gift, before she, when she unwraps it, you grab her chair, lift her head up because she's going to be downcasted. <laughs> lift her head up. Lift her head up and say, baby, look in my eyes. Listen, listen, I know. I know you thought you was going to get this. I understand, <laughs> but babe. But see, this is where I want us to go. This is Then you roll out your 10-year plan with her. Babe, this is our new decade. This is our decade for us to be debt-free. This is our decade for us to be our healthiest. Mm -hmm. So Because if you spin it like that and you let her know that you planned this out for the next decade. That's right. She's going to be like, babe, I see where you're taking us. See, it's not about the gift that you get. It's about how you spin it. It's See, how you if spin you it. get the Peloton and you say, babe, 
I want to spend as much time with you. See, I see this marriage going on and on and on. I want us to be in our 60s and our 70s, still going adventures, hikes, you know, traveling. Okay, so it starts right now. I want you to get on this Peloton and I want you to walk those miles. Okay, because I want us to be in good health. Okay, into our latter years of our life. I want to spend as much time with you as possible, babe. I don't want, you know, us to be in a, in a, in a hospital somewhere laid up in our 60s and our 70s. I want you and I to be thriving and healthy in our 60s and 70s. So it starts now. This Peloton is my heart giving it to you, babe. That's it. That's how you present, do it. Present, presentation. Mm. Okay? Present. That's right. Presentation. That, that's it, fellas. That's all you got to do. And I'm telling you, she'll get on that Peloton and ride for you. <laughs> You'll probably get slapped. Yeah, all this is out of the window. <laughs> uh, so, so, so go ahead and go ahead and get her what she wants, bro. <laughs> because no matter how you spin it, she ain't gonna be spinning on that Peloton. No, <laughs> no. But why though? Why? Why, ladies? Why do we have to erase such a great gift and then have to deal with you not being your best? Huh? The roast is still the same for the last seven years. Come on, man. <laughs> Like we men, we we are like our taste buds are different, man. Like especially us, we're food connoisseurs. You know, so 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 we're not saying you're bad. We're just saying why be stagnant? Mm. In every area of our lives, we should not be stagnant. And so, if your man gets you a Peloton, he just says, "Hey, man, I've been I have a gym membership for a whole year, and you ain't came with me yet." <laughs> Maybe so, if so, so I, maybe, maybe if I bring it to the house. Maybe if I bring it to the house. Eliminates one obstacle to us getting this workout in. Yeah. So that's all. And, and, and I think if ladies really hurt our hearts, they'll understand how our mind works. Mm. Because they'll be like, you know what? This is for us. Because you know what? Every holiday, for there's a lot of men out there who's... Getting the same dry food every year. <laughs> it's time to get that subscription to the Food Network, my brother, and get her a cookbook and say, listen, you married to me. You're not going nowhere. You're not mm. going to divorce me over this. So take it or leave it. Wow. And then right. you get slapped and then you ain't going to get none for a few months. And then so <laughs> maybe play this podcast around her and just do those little laughing with her. Oh, they're yeah. hilarious. <laughs> Uh, these guys, I tell you, they are hilarious. It may be the truth. Mm-hmm. In the form of a seed, we'll plant into her heart and mind and say, you know what, babe? I'll take a Peloton this year. <laughs> I think there's no better way to leave on this topic than that right there. <laughs> All right. We're going to go ahead and keep it moving into the main topic of the day. And Josh, I'm going to let you go ahead and segue into it. Today. We're going to be talking about what is your gift and how to give it to the world. Mm. Each and every one of us have a gift, a gift that was given to us by God to give to the world for his glory, to draw men and women back to him, their true source of life. Um, But unfortunately, there's a lot of people who are completely unaware of their giftings and are, or their giftings are they're aware of, but are stagnant. So today's topic is to help you do a few things. And let's break those things down. I have a lot of points, but BD is going to give me a 30 minute timer and whatever I don't get to in that 30 minute time frame, I will go ahead and save for another podcast. But there's two things we're going to talk about um, with a lot of points and layers to them that talks about what is your gift and how to give it to the world. First off, we're going to talk about the pillars of giftings, and then we're going to talk about the process of giving your gift. Okay, the pillars of gifting is when it comes to your gift or purpose, you must establish these three things, BD. When it comes to your gift, when it comes to your purpose, you must establish these three things. You must establish your who, your what and your why. 
Before you can even begin the process of developing your gift, before you can even begin the process of whatever it comes to your gifting and pursuing your purpose and manifesting into the world, you must understand and establish your gifts who, <laughs> your gifts what, and your gifts why. Your gifts who is, who is this gift for? The who represents ultimately the person that you are ensuring gets the, the prime glory of. The who is God. Your gift must actually, your gift must have its foundation in the number one who, who is God, that I'm doing this for God. You cannot be doing this for a significant other. You can't do this for yourself. You can't do this for anyone else. Your gift's main purpose is for the glory of one person that's God. Now, what is, the what represents what your gift is, establishing what it is, uh, uh, finalizing it, establishing its premises and its principles and all that kind of stuff. And your why is the reason why it must get done. Your who, your what, and your why. Now let's talk about the processes of, <clears throat> of your gift. BD has a lot of points. They have five things you must do when it comes to your gift. Okay. You must discover your gift, BD. Mm -hmm. You must develop your gift. Mm -hmm. You must defend your gift. Mm. You must distribute your gift and you must dedicate the glory of that gift back to God. Five things you must do right now in order to get your gift out there into the world and ensure your gift makes room for you and bring you before great people to ensure that you have generational wealth that is passed down. Generational wealth and generational faith are two important things that you and I must pass down. And every man must understand this. Fellas, listen to me closely. There are two things you and I as men must focus on as the, as the leaders of our home. And that's passing down generational wealth and generational faith. Generational faith means that our children's children's children will always fear the Lord. And generational wealth is ensuring that our children's 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 fear of the Lord is always financing the gospel financing the purpose in the kingdom of God. Now, I'm not going to go into a preaching tangent on that, but I'm going to go stay in focus on this. Five things you must do. But before I get into those, let's talk about the problem and talk about what is a gift. Let's break those things down real quick, BD. Okay. Like I said, those five things, for those who are taking notes out there, five things you must do to process your gift is you must discover your gift, you must develop your gift, you must defend your gift, you must distribute your gift, and you must dedicate the glory of your gift back to God. Now, but let's talk about some problems and, and definitions of gifts. The problem in our world, BD, and everyone watching the Good Guys podcast, is that the gifts of many have either been stored away or are serving a wrong purpose. When it comes to gifts, either people's gifts have been stored away, collecting dust, and providing nothing, and contributing nothing to society, or a person's gift is being used for a wrong purpose. There's a lot of people right now who have a gift, and they know they're good at something. They know they're great at something. They know they are specialists. They know that they have a deep uh, sense of understanding about a field. But that gift has been stored away because of insecurities, because of uh, inadequacies or whatever. That gift has been stored away and they, they're they not allowing that gift to have life, right? Um, or you have individuals, BD, whose gifts are being used for the wrong purpose. They're singing, they're writing, they're, they're uh, body, their mind, their creativity is being used to fulfill the negative assignments of this world system. God cares about who has control over your gift. God cares about glory because glory determines the growth of others. If God gets the glory out of your life, then people can receive salvation. If people can recognize the glory of God in your life, then they will be the goodness of God through your glory, through your gift, will draw them to repentance and to have a fulfilling life. That's why God cares about glory because he knows that I am mature enough to handle glory. I'm not a selfish, egotistical God. God that utilizes glory just to lift me up. But when people recognize who I am and realize that I am the son, that I am the life, that I am the one that gives life, that I can, I can bring them to a place where they can be eventually glorified in their new bodies to be in heaven with them always. Ooh, that's a good word. That's a good word, BD. You ain't saying nothing in here. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about what's a gift. A gift, ladies and gentlemen, is a special ability or capacity a natural endowment talent. What is a gift? A gift is a special ability or capacity. Let's break that down. 
Each and every one of us <clears throat> have a special ability. I have a special ability. God has gifted me with a special ability to 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 help coach people. I have a special ability uh, with words. I have a special ability with encouraging. I have a special ability when it comes to wisdom. I I didn't. I cannot. It's just a natural gift. I've been given advice since the fifth grade. I got sixth grade. I got a sixth grade yearbook where people's like, "Thank you, Josh, for the advice." So that was a natural gift that was even evident when I didn't even know that I was good at that. And I used to hate people whose gifts within the artistic arena. I couldn't draw those little Hot Wheels. I couldn't color, right? You know what I'm saying? I couldn't sing. I couldn't dance. So I thought my gift was just lame because I was like, I didn't know I was an advice giver. But either way, I had a special ability, an ability that I can do without effort, special capacity. Not all of us have the same capacity, BD. Some people have a local capacity. Some people have a regional capacity. Some people have a national capacity. Some people have a global capacity. And it's crazy how many people say, well, that person has a global capacity and they envy somebody else's gifting their that person's capacity of that gift when you can still be lucrative. You can still be successful at your, at your level. But everyone has a special ability a special capacity, a natural endowment. That means God has endowed, God has given you a large uh, substance about yourself that makes you unique. It is your talent. Talent is what separates you. But let's keep going. We talked about the problem. We talked about what is a gift. Now let's break down real quickly the five musts. And this is where BD can chime in. You must discover your gift you must develop your gift, you must defend your gift, you must distribute your gift, and you must dedicate the glory of your gift back to God. Let's go to what, how to discover your gift. These are quick points. We're going to get through these real quickly, <clears throat> and this is where BD can chime in and get into it with me. You ready, BD? Let's do it. In order to discover your gift, you must be discovered by the gift. Mm. You must be discovered by the greatest gift. This gift is the man, Christ Jesus. Before salvation, your gift has been tarnished. Before salvation, your gift is useless to the the kingdom of God. Before salvation, your gift is is laid in the presence of of the world's uh, desire for it. But when you understand the gift of Jesus and what the purpose of his life was and the purpose of his death, burial and resurrection, then when you come into that salvation and you become a new creature, old things being passed away and behold, all things are becoming new. And you begin to stir that gift, the gift that Paul was talking to Timothy about was stir that gift, stir the gift of salvation. When you begin to understand the unity that comes with you and the spirit of God for your sanctification, the deeper you get into that sanctification, the more pure your gift becomes, the more aware you become of your gift and the purpose of it. You see what I'm saying? So now you take that gift of singing, that gift of speech, that gift of talk, that gift of dance, that gift of whatever. And as you begin to embrace the gift of Christ, You begin to see the life of that gift and see the true purpose of it. And you'll be able to say, you know what? Life is greater. It's bigger than just making money off this. Life is bigger than just being successful off this alone. That this gift is designed to be given back to the gift that was given to me. In order to discover your gift, you must be discovered by your gift. The Bible says no man searches for God. The Bible talks about that if any man be drawn, if if you're going to be drawn to Christ, you have to be drawn to him by the Father, that the goodness of God is what draws us to repentance. So in order for you to discover your gift and to really utilize it to this to this to this optimum level, you have to be discovered by the gift. And that gift is Jesus Christ himself. Anything on that, Peter? Because I can keep going. Uh, no, I think you covered that one pretty good. No, nothing significant to add. All right, cool. Next point, you must determine what you love and what you loathe. When you discover your gift, your gift is in what you love and what you hate. That's where you can find your true gifting. If you love to see people come together, the Holy Spirit through the gift <clears throat> that was given to you by Christ, which is the spirit, will show you your unique way of bringing people together. And when you begin to see that, wow, I like to see people come together or for my sake, I like to see people uh, mature 
and mature in life and grow in life and, and become their best self for God's optimal use. So I'm going to find all kind of ways to discover what is my unique specific gift in making sure this happens. In order to discover your gift, you got to say, man, this is what I love to see. And this is what I hate to see. What I hate to see in the world is people being deceived. I hate seeing people not coming to truth. I hate seeing people uh, uh, die from their excuses, die from their insecurities. That's what I hate to see. So that loath, that hate, and that love to see people equipped moves me to sharpen my gift. It moves me to give my gift to the world in, in a perpetual way that even when I'm dead and gone, my gift continues to keep giving because it's motivated by what I love and what I hate. So the way I kind of look at it is like, I feel like there's your gift and then there's, there's your calling, right? Yeah. So your gift is like the thing, like you said, the thing that you are best at with the least amount of effort. <clears throat> you know what I mean? It comes easy to you. That's, you know, you can do that gift better than most people can. It's easy for you. Mm -hmm. Right. And then your calling, I think, is like what you said, you know, either something that you really enjoy or something that you love, you know, like, so, so I'm going to use this thing that I do better than anybody else. That's my gift. And I'm going to use that towards this calling. I can't stand, you know what I mean? When people like for Josh's example, <clears throat> I can't stand when people are deceived. Okay. I'm going to use my gift of communication, my gift of speech and advice giving towards that calling. You know what I mean? That's good. So BD. that's that's kind of the way I've always looked at it. That's beautiful, BD. That that make that puts everything together. It's like the calling. When you answer the call of God, your gift has a unique purpose now. Like now you saying, you know what? Now I have something to attach this natural talent to something worthwhile. That's powerful, BD. That I'm glad you put that because that's gonna help a lot of people because your calling is your why. This must be done. You see what I'm saying? Let's keep going. In order to discover your purpose, you must dig deep. What I mean by digging deep is, is because when you live life, a lot of stuff is hoarded in your heart. As you go through life, we hoard a lot of memories. We hoard a, we hoard a lot of negative experiences. We hoard a lot of <clears throat> junk. We hoard it in our hearts. And it, it piles on top of our gift. It piles on top of our calling. It piles on top of why we are here. Nobody is on this planet by accident. You hear me? Your reason for living is greater than your reason for dying. We need you. We need you. Point blank, period. You was not sent here by accident. You were sent here with a purpose. And when you understand that you have... See, see whatever you identify with will determine your self-esteem. If you identify yourself with the approval or the acceptance of others, then you would die by the, their disapproval or lack of acceptance. But when you connect and you identify with God, then you will never be moved. And that's important. And so when you understand that, you won't look at your life and be like, well, I, I, I had a baby out of wedlock or, or I had a divorce or, or I had an abortion or, or, or I had this type of lifestyle or, or I messed up in life. We all flawed. So when you understand that, that God don't care what you have done, it's all about what y'all can do now, then you will say, you know what, how can I utilize or how can I remove all these toxic things off the top of my gifting, dust it off, polish it and present it back to the world. It's important for us to dig deep, dig past those insecurities, dig past those inadequacies and really find the golden uh, 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 essence of who you are. And connect that to God and identify with him so that you can move on in confidence in producing your purpose. Absolutely. Um, I just think I think that's so important. And I, I think that's what happens to a lot of people. You know, life hits and it's, it's real. You know, you go through certain situations, you go through circumstances, you know, you got your nine to five job, you got your family, you got so many things that are pulling for your attention and your time. And I think people's <clears throat> gifts and their callings do get buried under all of that. And, you know, society doesn't really push, hey, you know, go after your, <laughs> use your gifts and go after your calling. Society pushes us into a factory system. Hey, That's go right. to school, uh, go to school uh, for this, incur a bunch of student loan debt, 
which ensures that you have to work a nine to five job and, you know, you do that for the rest of your life. You're just an employee worker. When in actuality, like you said, Josh, God put us here for a specific reason. God did <clears throat> not put us here to just work a nine to five job and pay our bills for the rest of our lives until we die. Like you, you have a God specifically and uniquely made you with a certain set of gifts and abilities for a certain calling. So you have to dig and, it, and, and it, you have to be intentional about finding out what your gifts are and what your calling is. No matter what it is that's happened to you in your life, a lot of times that will be your calling. If something mm-hmm. tragic, you know, happened to you, that could be something that you loathe and you want to help other people that have gone through the same thing. So that could be your calling. You know, that's something that you're going to be passionate about that no matter what, you know, tries to come and stop you from doing that, that burning desire from what happened to you and to help somebody else not have to go through the same thing or help someone else cope with, you know, when they're going through the same thing, that passion will keep you going to be successful in that calling. Yeah, BD, this system do not this system does not want you to be creative. They don't want you to be connected to the kingdom's resources. They don't want you connected to heaven's resources. What they want you to do is people understand that uh the biggest people that are taxed the heaviest are workers, employees. Yes. That ta- they are the heaviest taxed. Entrepreneurs, million they're not taxed like employees and workers. So what do you think they're going to do? They're going to create a public school system that's going to push people to nine to five because they're going to be able to tax them the most. But when you are when and when you're connected to that system, when you're connected to that system, then all of a sudden you're going to be too tired to be creative and creativity yep. leads to uh, financial freedom. And when you're connected to heaven's resources, you know for a fact that promotion comes from God. You know for a fact that he can bring uh, whatever you need to you. He'll teach your hands how to profit. You know what I'm saying? There's a, he'll ensure that your gift. Listen, you're, 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 you're helping somebody else achieve their gift in a nine to five is not going to make room for you. Only room it's going to make for you is in that box. You might be a manager. Mm-hmm. You may be a regional manager, but that's right. the only box you have. Right. Your true gift if you understand how, if you understand ownership and you understand uh, 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 hard work and and blood, sweat and tears and your own efforts, then you will begin to see, man, this gift is making room for me. And now you can almost become a consultant. Now you can consult companies. Now you can be a person that you're so good that these high people are looking for you. The Bible says your gift will make room for you and put you before great people. That's why I do what I do. And that's why I'm saying you got to dig deep. And a part of learning, BD, is unlearning. So you have to unlearn this system that you have been taught and say, God, what are what are we supposed to do with our gift? There's nothing wrong with working a nine to five, but not till. See, listen, we were created for fulfillment, not retirement. If you live in this nine to five, you're working for retirement. So you can do a nine to five for a period of time, but there's got to be something in you that's leading you to fulfillment. Because retirement is not guaranteed. There's a lot of people who's retired and they got to work another job. All right, hold up, Jayden. Yeah. <sighs> Even the mornings ain't safe. Goddamn kids, man. But the good thing is the tape, this stuff is rolling, so it's an easy snip, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you get that time? Uh, it was around the uh, thirty-nine around. minute marker. Okay, thirty-nine Maybe. minute. Yeah, it's just rolling, so that's easy. All right, and we can start with you if you had any points on that <clears throat> about. The system of taxing us and fulfillment and retirement, all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, and there and there's nothing wrong with working a nine to five job. I don't want anybody to hear this That's and real. be like, you yeah. know, oh, I'm quitting my job tomorrow. Look, I work a nine to five. Josh works a nine to five. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. You know what I mean? But the the important thing is, 
don't get caught up in that nine to five and oh i'm too tired you know to do anything else like work the nine to five but make sure that you are being intentional about finding out what your gift is if you don't know what your gift is and finding out what your calling is and working on that in your spare time Listen, work offers a balance. When you work unto the Lord, you work in excellence. But you also have to understand that your work is working for you. When you work unto the Lord, you exceed the expectations of your manager, right? But when you have the mindset that this work that I'm doing is working for me, then you will, you will utilize the money that you make from your job, especially if you're single. You can utilize the money for that to invest in your fulfillment. You see what I'm saying? That's the game. The game is to use them, not to use them in a bad way because you're still working into the Lord. So you're still going to work in excellence on your job. You're still going to do what you're supposed to, but you also working on your gift on the side. So me and BD, we work nine to fives, but you know what we're doing? We're investing in something greater. We're investing in, in residual in residual wealth. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, uh, generational wealth and generational faith. You see what I'm saying? And so, so that's what we have to do. That's what we have to process. Because that is what's going to help us not get lost in that nine to five system. Because why do you think they call weeks weak and weekends weakened? Think about that. They want you weak during your week so you can be weakened on the weekend. Think about that. Why do you, words have power. Work till you're weak so that you're weakened by the weekend. Wow. I never thought about that one. Yep. That's what they call your boy the wordsmith, BD. Questions you must ask yourself when it comes to discovering your gift, right? Real quick, what are you naturally good at and what can you do effortlessly? Number two, what what um, what grabs your attention regularly and what has a grip on you? When you see that commercial, you watch the whole commercial. You're like, wow, something about those kids, I got to help. When you hear about single moms, it just grips you. That kind of gives you an idea what your gift is, right? Right. How to develop a gift real quickly. You must decide and remove all distractions. Number one, to develop your gift, you have to say, I'm deciding. Decision is incision. Decision means to cut. Decision means I'm cutting away from procrastination. I'm cutting away from being lost in the system. I'm making a decision to pursue and to ensure and develop my gift to a place where it affects people. When you feel that because desire and decision are pointless without discipline. In order to develop that gift, you got to say, you know what? I got to remove all distractions because it's hard to be dis disciplined with with open doors to distractions. Distractions are going to come, but it must be closed off. The doors of your soul is your are your eyes and your ears. You have to close those doors to distractions because you have a greater vision. 2020 is the year of vision. All right. Next point on how to develop your gift, you have to support. Anything on that, BD? Mm -mm. Go ahead. You must support and surround your talent. Support and surround your talent with trainings or tools or skill sets. Talent without skill, you're just good at it, but you're not efficient at it. Efficiency is key. So the, the goal is, I heard someone give this quote, it's not about doing it till you can't get it. To, it's not doing it till you get it right. It's doing it till you can't get it wrong. You're so good at that that you're rarely wrong. Like you're so good, like Steph Curry at shooting, that that your percentages breaks records. You see what I'm saying? But that mm -hmm. takes work. Right. Like, what do you think? Why do you think I'm so good at words? I work words. I, I Like I did in my last video, I told y'all, I get a Bible and I flip through the Bible and I point to a verse and I must come up with a message with it. Like last week, me and Petey talked about macaroni and cheese. That's, that's, <laughs> that, is, that is because I worked my words. I can find a trinity in about anything. I can, I can find a message in anything because I, I, I work words. I challenge myself. I developed my speaking into a skill, into an art form that I would never stop adding skills to it. I would never stop polishing it until I'm gone. Don't do it till you get it right. Oh, I got it right. And then you stop. No, no, no. I'm taking it to the next level. I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to make this talent a skill. That's what determines. That's what separates good from great. You can be good at something. But are you great at it? If you, in order to be great, you got to turn your talent into a skill set. That's it on that, BD. And that's a good point because you know, like, there's there's definitely a difference. 
Like you, you can have a gift and that's you and you're going to have that. And that's going to be something like it, like, you know, like we said, that's that you're naturally good at. Right. But in order to have the most impact, you know, you're going to you are going to have to refine that gift. You're going to have to turn it into a skill. Like <clears throat> for my example, I'm I'm very creative, mm-hmm. very creative in my mind. I can think of, you know, um, things that I want to do. Uh, visually as far as like storytelling or a video or something like that but i can visualize it in my head but unless i have the technical skills to know what programs i need to use what what uh effects that i need to use to bring that (coughs) vision that i have in my head to life through film then i'm not i'm useless you know what i mean my gift is useless so i have to refine that gift i have to research what are people what programs are people using how can i get this effect that i'm that i've got in my head how can i put this in the video that's the work that you have to put in to refine your gifts so that you actually can reach the most amount of people and fulfill you know your ultimate calling so that's an important point you can't just you know get out there all right i've got my gift that's cool but you know if it's not really refined you might not you know you might not go as far as your 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 god wants you know, you might not achieve everything that God wants you achieve, uh, to achieve because you don't want to be we don't want to have, you know, we want to have a spirit of excellence. That's right. As believers, like we don't want to. Oh, just because I'm doing this for God, I can be out here, you know, mediocre. No, we want to have a spirit of excellence. So refine your gift. You must refine it. There is in the refining that determines um, how far you get. See, see, skills are important. People hire people uh, pay for skills. They don't pay for talent. Because talent don't last long. Now, you may get in the door through your talent, but you won't stay in the building long with your talent like that. I think people don't develop their talent because it comes so easy. And they think that, well, I could just wake up and do this. It's something called conditioning. Like, like I could be good at something, but if I, like, when you go to a gym, you can have, you can have, you could be a better ball player than a guy. But if that guy can, can run, <laughs> it, it, endurance is key. Like, like you can, you can be whatever, man, but you got to endure. There's some people that you'll be like, I know I'm better than him, but he's in more shape though. He's more conditioned. You got to, like, you remember those teams? Well, I played (laughs) that you, you occasionally got on the floor. Um, and we used to get smacked by teams. I I don't, I'm not racist, but those white boys, those white boy teams. (laughs) And we just walked in and we saw how tall they was and we saw the shade of their skin. And we thought that we can, we already up by 30 just because we're black. Mm-hmm. And those boys had a little bit more passing. They passed. They little they had a little bit more discipline. <clears throat> we lost to a lot of teams that we were better than. Yep. But because we walked in there thinking that, oh, I'm good at this. I can just wake up and do this. And those white boys said, we got him, Jimmy. All we got to do is pass the ball, cut, and fake. Got beat. And then there's yep. nothing worse losing to a person that you're better than. Right. Well. That's all I got. All right. Let's keep going. Uh, next point is simple. You have to sharpen it daily, work hard at it every day, and you must suffocate doubt and disbelief. We already talked about you got to sharpen it every day. Every day I'm working on my gift. Every day. There's not a day that goes by that I don't at least give some time to it. Every day. Listen, 24 hours, BD. Mm -hmm. 24 hours. Everybody has the same hours. Eight. Well, let's say if you get six hours of sleep. Six hours, right? Real quickly, and I'm done. Six hours of sleep on average. Let's let's just say eight, okay? 24 minus eight is what, BD? Uh, 16. Six, 16. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make you look stupid. Don't you do that to me. <laughs> <clears throat> That's how you make other people look stupid. Hey, what's 24 minus eight? <laughs> right. Hey, hey, what's that? Oh, oh. <clears throat> 16. Eight hours mm-hmm. at work. 16 minus eight, BD? What? Eight. <laughs> what you eat on average an hour and a half a day so seven okay. let's just let's take four hours off of that four hours for miscellaneous right okay. everybody has four extra hours every day mm. where are those hours going ladies and gentlemen right where are those hours going <clears throat> excuse me if you dissect your hours you will see who you who you can see what gets the most of your energy Imagine if you you got your eight hours of sleep, you worked eight hours, you had four hours to do everything else. 
mm-hmm. and you had four hours left for you. Imagine if you didn't watch that three-hour basketball game. What if you yep. didn't binge watch on Netflix? Imagine where you would be. Because Kobe Bryant says something amazing about his daughter. I listen to a lot of Kobe Bryant stuff because I connect with greatness. And uh, so anytime Jordan speaks, anytime Kobe speaks, I listen. When LeBron talks, I don't listen. But when Kobe, <laughs> Kobe says something. He, he told his daughter something very, very profound that I'm going to tell my children when I have them. He told his daughter, he was like, you know what? Um... If you put the hours in, if you if you put more hours in than your competition, then in a year or two years, you will be uh, leaps and bounds greater than them. Yeah. And what most kids do is or most people do is they 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 waste two years. OK, let's talk. Let's do this like this. So four hours. Right. A day. Right. Mm-hmm. Times three sixty five. I'll do the math real quick. So four five times four is twenty two, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six. Four times three is 12, 13, that's a hundred and that's 1,460 hours a year. So imagine if people wasted those almost 1,500 hours a year, but somebody capitalized on those 1,500 hours a year. Imagine, because there's money out there, there's opportunity out there, but not everybody's willing to invest that 1,460 hours a year in personal development. If you develop you, you everything around you develops. If you grow yourself, everything around you grows. Are you happy with the money you have? If you're not happy with the money you have, if you're not happy about where you are, then something in you ain't right. So yeah. <clears throat> every day you got to say, and with these last four hours, what if it's just two hours? Cool. If it's two or one, because you have kids, you have a family, great. That's right. An hour. If it gets down to 30 minutes. Give that 30 minutes to you. If that means, hey, I already know I have a wife. So there's times I can't give to myself. BD has kids. So I'm sure he probably gets up before they get up or stays up later while they're asleep. You do you, you make time for what you want to make time for. And that's all right. I got on that, BD. I don't know if you have something else on that. You just got to, like you said, um, keep keep track of your of your time throughout the day. Like, like, like you said, say you have, you know, you have that four hours or you have a family. So maybe, you know, you want to spend time with your family. Say you got two hours. If you were to keep a log of everything that you do for, you know, maybe a week, right? You would see a lot of idle time scrolling through Instagram, scrolling through social media, watching a game on television with millionaires making millions of dollars and and executives making millions of dollars off of those teams and networks making billions of dollars off of ad revenue and you're not getting any of that matter of fact you're losing because you're paying for the subscription to whatever service that is bd 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 be careful where you pay your attention at least get something back where you pay your attention oh my you're paying attention and they're making money off of your attention and you ain't getting a percentage off of your attention you're paying you're paying you're (laughs) You're not even not only you're not getting anything you're paying so that is the double not productive so if you if you're inventorying that and you're saying okay uh, i and it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't seem like a lot at the time doesn't seem 30 minutes scrolling through instagram doesn't seem like a lot but when it adds up over the course of the week that's three hours there that you could have been grinding the, the 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 basketball game. Oh, you only okay. I only watched one half. It was forty five minutes. Okay, but forty five minutes. Say you oh. watch three games a week. That's three hours that you could have been grinding. So keep inventory of the things that you're doing. What are you? You're sitting down on TV uh, on the couch watching TV. Start thinking about it. Start being aware. I'm wasting time. Am I using? Am I utilizing my gifts? What is my calling? Why am I here? On this planet, why did God put me mm. here? Is it to watch TV Mm-mm. and watch this game? Or could I be doing something that fulfills my purpose? Because there's nothing more fulfilling than achieving your purpose. You might have a good nine to five job that's paying you good money and you know you're comfortable, you got a nice living for yourself. But how fulfilling are how fulfilled are you really? When you're walking in your calling, you're using the gift that God gave you to, for the specific reason that He gave it to you. There's nothing more fulfilling. Man, invest your invest your attention where you can get a return on that investment. It's that simple. 
it's nothing wrong at the end of a hard working week to watch a game. If you really invested those three extra hours and you really, you really put the work in, you really made an investment in yourself, you really made an investment in your family, you really made an investment in your time with God, you really made an investment in your craft. It's nothing wrong with watching a game. Yeah. But the, but what, what, what we're saying is in watching that game at the end of the week, you're reaping rest and restoration. You see what I'm saying? You're reaping from that. But if you keep paying your attention to something and you're not getting nothing back from it, and that's why you can't get mad at somebody that bust their butt and worked hard to get whatever. You can't get mad. Right. And you sitting there still at the same. If you at the same level now that you was last year, you wasted this year. It's that simple. If you did not improve, if you are in the same, if you have the same vocabulary, you have the same mindset, you have the same weight or worse, you have the same ideologies, you ain't did nothing with this year. But I know, I know Instagram got a lot from you. Right. I know, I know those worthless friends got a lot out of you. I know mm. your your dark demons of thoughts got a lot out of you. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. <clears throat> Life is like you only got one. We are not cats, man. And they don't even get nine lives. <laughs> so we only get one. You take it seriously, man, because when you die, you got to meet, you got to face your maker face to face. And he's going to say, what did you make for us? Because the Bible talks about be very careful how you build the foundation. The foundation was Christ. He says some people will build with hay and straw. Some people will build with gold and precious stones. But all of their works will be tried by fire. Even though your soul is saved, you have nothing to show for your life. I don't want to get to heaven and God puts a fire to my work and it burns. I want it to be burn proof, fireproof. So that I can get what so what people can see and know this man lived. Let's keep going for time's sake. Mm-hmm. How to defend your gift. The rest I'll go through real quickly because they're real quick points. How to defend your gift. You defend your gift. You defend your calling by building quietly. Don't tell everybody what you're doing because that's how doubt gets in. Don't tell everybody what you're building. That's how doubt gets in. People was, people, Noah didn't tell people he was building an ark. They saw him build an ark. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 don't, don't bring people into your laboratory. Don't bring people into your workroom. You see what I'm saying? Because you got to defend it. You got to say, you know what? My gift comes from God. So you defend it by knowing your dependence. If you depend on the, the, um, the praise of others and the cosign of others, as soon as they say, I don't think it's going to work. Oh, okay. I guess it won't work. But if your dependence is in God and, and you know, your divine, the divine told you to do this. You defend it because you have no doubt that God told you to do it. You defend it by building quietly. You defend it by being around believers, people who believe in you. But you also got to believe in it yourself, ultimately, and blocking out negativity. That's how you defend your gift. You build quietly. You don't let everybody touch it. You don't let everybody get around it with their words and their thoughts and etc. Now, how to distribute your gift real quickly. Determine your audience. Determine your audience and their needs. That's how you, that's how you distribute your gift. Okay, before I give this gift to the world, who are the people that you want me to reach, God? I'm here for the remnant. I'm here I'm here for people that really are serious about their walk with God. That's where the bulk of my energy goes. A part of my energy goes to people that wants to get to know God and I help them make sense of their life. But the ultimate goal of my books, the ultimate goal of my videos is for the people who are serious about walking with God. That's my core audience. The other audiences, they are welcome to come into that core audience, but I know who my audience is and their needs are. Am I going to be the best? Pre- am I going to be the f- most famous preacher with that type of goal? No. Am I going to be world renowned like that? No, because my goal is not for my goal is not to reach ultimately self-seeking fake Christians. My goal. What's up, champ? Bro. What's up, big time? <laughs> you heard your uncle's voice and got inspired. No, he, oh, all right. He left. <laughs> the truth hurts. <laughs> I'm just joking. Anyway, determine your audience and their needs. Don't get so broad. Be like, oh, I'm supposed to reach the world. No, you, your world may not be that big. Okay. How to distribute your uh, gift? Determine your scope. Some people got a local scope, BD. Some people have a, a regional scope. It's like some people, let's make it plain. Some people got a Charlotte scope. And even within Charlotte, they got a neighborhood of Charlotte. If, if the neighborhood of Charlotte is your scope of your city, cool. Charlotte may not be for you. Or your city might not be your goal. If if it is Charlotte, stay within Charlotte. One thing I heard my pastor say, which was profound, he said, man, I got called to reach the nation. 
but God called me to Charlotte. So all of my efforts went to Charlotte. So I wasn't chasing conferences. I wasn't chasing national exposure. I wasn't, God called me to Charlotte. It takes maturity to stay within your scope. So, so you may have a you may have a neighborhood scope, you may have a, 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 a city scope, you may have a state scope, you may have a, a regional scope, you may have a national scope, or you may have a global scope. Know your scope so that you won't uh, uh, burn yourself out trying to reach a limit that you wasn't uh, built for. Like I said earlier, your gift is also a capacity. Don't don't take your gift to places that's going to break you. How to distribute your, your uh, gift? Uh... Deliver your gift in excellence. These people deserve excellence. People deserve your best. That's why I hate restaurants that don't give me their best. <laughs> you saw the chicken before you put it in the box. You know that wasn't y'all's best. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. <laughs> Let me get off that. I got bad PD. I went to Bo- I went to Bojangles last week, man. I turned back around. I said, "This ain't y'all's best for me." Dang again? No, no, no. This, this was in the hood. <clears throat> So, but they gave me, I don't know what time they gave me two small thighs and the thighs look crusty. Mm. I turned back around. Thanks to my wife. My wife told me not to take nobody's be- uh, worse. Mm. I turned back around. I said, my wife would have sh- told me to go back and give me fresh chicken. I went back That's around. Right. They gave me these golden fried thighs. BD. Mm. I said, this is your best. Yes. I slid the window, said, lady, come here, come here, come here. You see these two crusty chickens you gave me? Right. Were these y'all's best? No, sir. Mm. Not our best. You see these golden thighs? Right. This is what I expect from you. I see your potential. Every time. Every time. You take you take the best of my... You take all of my money for it. That's right. You take the best of my money. You take the best of my money. You should be giving me the best of your chicken. Oh, they, they came to receive from me? Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you the best of me. Excellence take time. Some people put their stuff out there because they care more about being uh, noticed than they are being good. <sighs> people care about being known more than they care about being good. Being good at something, oh, being great. Being great at something takes time. You may not be known for a long time. Right now, I'm at a level because I'm building my greatness. I don't care about being famous. I care about being, I care about being, oh, let me stay, get my words out. I don't care about being famous. I care about being faithful. Okay. How to dedicate your gift back to God and BD, we're done. What's our time? We've got about 15, 20 minutes. All right. As we come to a close, mm. the most important part is where the glory of your gift goes. Mm-hmm. How to dedicate your gift back to God. Okay. Because that's important. Constantly realize that you had to use his air and his grace to do it. It's that simple. It don't matter how good you are. You, it, you couldn't have done it without him. The Bible says in him that we live, move, and have our being. He right. deserves glory because you... Imagine if God charged us half a penny for every breath we took. Mm. He could. You're using my breath. You using my air to do this and you're not going to give me glory. Mm -hmm. My grace is what made made you sufficient, made you efficient. My sufficient grace made you efficient in your gift and you ain't going to give me glory. Glory in your hands is only going to puff your head up. Glory in your hands ain't going to save nobody. You give glory back to me. I can save their souls. You can't save their souls. So when you realize that you're constantly using his air (laughs) and you're constantly Mm -hmm. using his grace, God, I humbly give my glory for this back to you. So when people hear how great I was, the Holy Spirit put the words out of me. He gets the glory for this because I was nervous before I spoke. I I was, I'm knees, weak arms is heavy. Almost threw up my wife's spaghetti. You know what I'm saying? And so I was nervous, but because of the spirit revved me up, I was able to do this. He gets the glory. You deserve the glory. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Hey, bro, it's a sweet sound of God. (laughs) I bet you you, you God be like, in in, in premise, (laughs) it was a good sound. But bro, nah, it wasn't good. (laughs) God's a God of excellence. Anyway. There's a lot of different ways you can worship me, J.E. Yeah, worship, (laughs) worship, worship me in speech. (laughs) Not his song. Not his song. That was a. All right. Anyway, 
You have to understand, in order for you to discover, develop, defend, distribute your gift, you first must establish your who. Who are you doing this for? When you do it for him, man, you'll see how powerful your gift would change the hearts of others because you're giving your gift with the glory of God. And when people recognize the glory of God in your gift, then and you and you and you bypass, you you move out the way. Some of us were in the way and we wonder why people are not saved. You got to get out the way and let your gift be seen and let the glory of God be known. And it's okay if you're not recognized. And that's all I got, BD. All right. Well, that was definitely, I think, a um, a profitable uh, segment. I hope that added value to uh, our listeners out there. Um, hey, hop in the comments. Let us know if anything resonated with you from uh, <coughs> today's topic. Um, you know, and talk about, you know, your gift and how you're going to utilize that gift in 2020 now that you've got the vision. Now you can see, bro. Now you can see. Thanks to us. All right, we're going to keep it moving. <clears throat> we're going to do a good guys top five holiday edition. Okay. What we're going to talk about, we're going to give you guys some help out here. For for our, for for our female listeners, for the female constituents, okay, you might be wondering, what kind of gifts can I get for my significant other? Mm -hmm. What kind of thing do men like for Christmas? Sometimes I think men can be a little bit more challenging to get gifts for, uh, for you know. But we're gonna help you here at the Good Guys Podcast. We're gonna give you the top five things. That you can get your man, husband, boyfriend, significant other for Christmas. All right. So we're going to start at number five. You want me to go first, BD? Or you want to go first? I think we have the same ones. Oh, we have the same. Okay. We'll just go off the same ones, BD. Yeah, we're just expounding on these. Yeah. <clears throat> And the number five thing uh, that you can get is no obligations. Mm. Josh, I'll let you go off on this one because I feel like you. I feel like you've got a word. I got a word from the Lord. Do you see? Do you see the glory of God upon my face? Do you see the the <laughs> glow, the lighting? I saw it, and that's why I just said I'm gonna slide this one to Je because I feel like you got something in your spirit on this one. God said, "This for you, Je." No obligations, man. Do you know we're tired of carrying the waters upstairs? <laughs> Do you know that we're tired of the trash can ain't even all the way full? We could take it out tomorrow. Right. Like we don't we don't want to drive. No obligation. Mm -hmm. We we listen, if they want if they want their gift, tell them tell them to come over here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We want to be able to wake up Christmas Day and because you know what messes us up as men? Mm -hmm. Do you know? We're so practical. We're so thought out. Some men, let me make sure I made that clear. Because <laughs> there's a lot of men that are still boys and they're thinking. But when you have a mm -hmm. good guy, a man, <clears throat> he's already, at least me, I already have the week mapped out. Okay. I already got things mapped out, right? And there's right. nothing better than waking up with nothing to do. Nothing. Mm. Like, like there, that's why I hate like mid-afternoon, evening things. Because when mm -hmm. you wake up, you still got to think, oh, okay, by four o'clock, I got to get ready for this. There's no freedom. Right. There's no freedom. I'm obligated to be somewhere for, and it's always on a man's mind. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, I, I can't really rest because I got to do this. Right. But when you give us the gift of no obligations that we can just wake up and be, because sometimes y'all look at us as, as heroes, we talked about this in a previous podcast. If I wasn't here, you would have carried that water up the stairs. <laughs> if I wasn't here, if you were single, what would you do with the trash? <laughs> if you didn't have a husband, what, what have you been doing this whole singleness? You've been carrying those waters. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? You took out the trash. You know? Right. You hung those lights up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you put that Christmas tree up by yourself. That's right. And now that you got a man, you started outsourcing these things. Now, don't get me wrong. To me. You can, <laughs> to me. And there's nothing wrong with outsourcing the things because we men, we want to be needed. We want to help. That's right. But right. on Christmas Day and the days around Christmas, 
<laughs> because for us, Christmas is just like for us. Brandon's in the military. I'm in elementary. I mean, I'm in uh, in a uh, public school system. Mm-hmm. We have seasons where we plan for these pockets of seasons, right? Because we know we get a week off, we get a two weeks off, we get we get four days here, we get five days here, and we look at that calendar. We be like, okay, I can. These are no right. obligation days. <laughs> These are no right. obligation days. <laughs> that's, that's what we think. That's what we think. But then when we wake up, you're looking at us. Y'all got that road. What's that little cartoon meme that they have going around? What's that little guy? And they had one meme says, and so I guess it's for Star Wars. And he had oh, a little baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. He had the robe on with the coffee in his hand. And mm-hmm. as soon as we wake up, that's how y'all looking at us. Right. And y'all got a list. This is what I want to have done. Leave us alone. <laughs> we want our minds to be free. On these days, we want to be able to say, no, I don't want to do that. That's right. If I want to go for a drive, I want to go for a drive. If I want to go to the store, I want to go to the store alone. Right. No obligation. Because when y'all, it's interesting when y'all ride with us, y'all find extra places to stop. No, 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 no. I drove for a specific place for a specific thing. Mm-hmm. That's right. No obligations, BD. Any points on that from you, BD? Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and look, we understand that. You know, those obligations, those honeydew lists, those are part of being a man. They're part of being in a, you know, a, a healthy, you know, relationship. And that's fine. We're okay with being the hero 364 <clears throat> days out of the year. No, 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 BD. 300 and about 45. <laughs> we, we Listen, we're Kawhi Leonard's. We want load management. <laughs> load management. Load management, BD. That's all we ask for Christmas. Some load management, right? <laughs> we're we're okay with carrying the load most of the time, okay? We're you know if you're talking about a good guy, we only talk about good guys on this podcast. Now I can't speak for guys who don't have a job and and things of that nature, okay? We're talking about guys who are providing for their family, who are leading their family, who have the vision set for their family, and who are leading the way, and who are fulfilling these obligations for most of the year. Can we get one day or maybe a handful of days around Christmas time? with no obligations where we can just relax okay maybe we can plan for the next year ahead and and set the vision and set the course for our family just some time that we can do that without the nagging obligations that sometime (laughs) come with the holidays the honey-do lists the you know can you pick up my in-laws from the airport can you, you know, can you run to the grocery store seven times in one day uh, for a list of items that you probably could have got that one time that you went to the store this past week? Mm-hmm. Can we be freed for it, if nothing else, but one day Yeah, from those obligations? Yeah, man. Like if your in-laws in town, get an Uber. Tell me get an Uber. You know? Tell them to get the Uber. Like, tell your man, my man is off today, so y'all have to come in an Uber today. How about getting them a hotel? We don't want them in the house. It's an option. No, they don't have. Why do y'all care about these people's feelings? You should be caring about my feelings. Your. (laughs) There we go. I think sometimes y'all care so much about everyone's feelings, and we got to sacrifice our feelings for them. No, that must end. Your first obligation is to my feelings. If you know (laughs) my husband doesn't want y'all in the house, I don't care about their feelings being hurt. If it helps my feelings. I don't care because I'm like, listen, man, y'all annoying. Y'all got a hotel, okay? Y'all, y'all, I don't know. I don't feel like picking y'all up. Y'all keep mm-hmm. us from being, not y'all. The society keeps us from being honest. <laughs> mm. Like, a, okay. anyway, let's keep going. Number five, number four. Because you're about to go on another 30 minute tangent. Man, I was about to go down. <laughs> <laughs> Saw that exit. I was about to take it, BB. Number four. A solid. Thank you. Mm. Okay. I it, I feel like, and look, women do incredible work. Inc- okay. Incredible. Incredible. You guys, a lot of times, still work. Okay. You, you help with the bills. You hold down the house. You take care of it. There's so many things that women do. And I love it. Mm-hmm. You're, you're amazing. But you guys get thanks for what you do. Okay? You've got Mother's Day. It's the one of the biggest holidays of the year. You've got rap songs dedicated. Dear Mama. You know, the, the, you, you, the, the kids, they love Mom. 
Oh, mom. <clears throat> Don't leave the house, mom. I love my mom. Everybody does it for their mom. I get successful. I'm going to buy my mom a house. What? And, I, and we get a truck. What do we get? You know what I mean? Nobody cares about Father's Day. We don't get anything on Valentine's Day. I don't even, I don't think I got anything for my birthday this last year. It, you know, and it, it, for the most part, it's okay. I'm not tripping. I know what my responsibilities are as a man. And I take pride in handling my responsibilities in, in providing for my family and being a good husband and friend to my wife. I love it. I love this life. I love the married life. It's amazing. <laughs> but you know what would be nice? On Christmas, okay, if no other day, just a solid thank you for all the things <laughs> that you do as a man. Thank you for getting up in the morning and going to work, uh, you know, and providing for this family. Thank you, okay, for ensuring that there is food on the table. Thank you, okay, for knocking out the bills, okay, for without those bills being paid, the electricity would be cut off, okay? Thank you. For putting up with my with your in laws over the holidays, oh, thank uh, you okay. for cooking Christmas breakfast. <laughs> we just don't get we 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 don't hear it. I think people take for granted what men do sometimes, and I think and it, it and the reason why there's so many men not doing it. That's what it is. There's so many men. Who don't who are not working, who aren't providing for their families, that are not faithful to their wives, who are out, you know, just not there for their family, who are absent, who are running the streets. Like, can we get some credit? I know it's what we're supposed to do. I got that. But can we just get a thank you on Christmas? Yeah. Just a thank you. Yeah, BD. I think like what you said is true, man. Ladies, do not allow the negative, the negatives about men have you overlooked the good in yours, if you got a good one. Because sometimes you don't know what you got until you've gone through something worse. And so a lot of ladies, they probably say, well, I've been done dirty for so, well, not, not done dirty, but I've, I've heard so much dirty things about men, bad things about men that I'm, I'm nervous and my nervousness is putting pressure on him. My, oh, is he going to cheat on me? <clears throat> is he going to do this? And you, and you, and it's so much tension on the man that the man is like, why am I, why do I feel like I'm getting life or the death penalty for a misdemeanor? So what happens? You jump on that man. And that man was like, I just came home two minutes late, but, 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 but why? No, <clears throat> it's just two minutes. Do not allow the toxic, uh, Things said about men have you put unnecessary pressure on a really good man that you have? Because I think sometimes uh, with society being like that, <clears throat> it's almost like a good man is too good to be true. So there must be he must be doing something that when there's an error, I don't know, because he uh, because of what you've heard. So if you got you a good man, thank him, because it's, it's tough being a good man in this bad world. That's right. All right. Number three. If you want to help your significant other for Christmas or maybe another, you know, uh, another uh, any man. Knock out a bill. Mm -hmm. Knock out that energy bill. That's it. That Duke energy bill that comes every month. Take that. Knock it out. Knock it out. Just knock it out. Get rid of it. Just go ahead and get rid of it. You, that is one thing that you can remove from things that I have to do over the course of this month. If you want to see a tear coming down your man's eyes, you give him that open envelope and say, babe, mm. this right here is paid, babe. Thank you. Paid. You don't have to log in and, and you type in your username and your password that you don't remember because you've got 15 different passwords and, 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 and have to answer the security questions that you don't remember ever setting. It's paid. Don't even worry about it. Oh, you talking about. And, oh, oh, and then be like, babe, use that money that you would have paid for that bill on you. Right. Oh, go get you. Go get you a double waffle at Waffle House. Oh, man. You talking about... And, oh, and your wife be like, you know what? Go there alone. Oh! 
<laughs> we don't have to go together. Go oh. sit down at Waffle House. Take a good hour or two. Oh, you talk Order what you want. You talking about coming home and taking care of you? Ooh, you let us you man, if you if you take care of a bill and you say that money goes into your budget, you do whatever you want with it. And then mm. you say go and go out there and get your most favorite meal by yourself. That's a good gift, bro. We're not asking to pay rent. <laughs> We're not when I ask you to pay the mortgage. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. You don't have to knock out the mortgage. Just one of those middle bills, those a significant bill. Don't be taking care of the phone bill. No. <laughs> don't, don't, get, get, take, take care of something big. Get, take, take care of something medium, like an electric bill. Number two, knock out another bill. <laughs> <laughs> If you really want to, if you really want to make our Christmas the best if ever. If you want to see a grown man weep. <laughs> the first one shed a tear. That's a tear. That's but a if tear. you want to see a man. <laughs> if you want to see a grown man weep, knock out a second bill. Oh, man, BD. I, as a child, as a, as a young man, when I was single and that direct deposit hit. Wow. You, st- you had a lot of money to do a lot of things. <laughs> Yeah, but bruh, the same kid in me, the same young man in me, direct deposit. Oh, look at all that money! And then the husband in you says, <laughs> "All, <laughs> all you, that all money. <laughs> that money is gone. All you're gonna have left after this is twenty two dollars thirty six cents." Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> that big old bill. All you see is all you see is twenty two dollars <clears throat> and thirty eight seven thirty eight cents. And you just right. look at that and be like, "What am I gonna do with twenty two dollars?" We're talking about for us. All, a lot of our money goes to the upkeep for the family. We don't really get a lot of money for us. No. To do, like, when was the last time you bought something for yourself, BD? Like, think about that. I can't remember the last time I actually went out and bought me something significant for me. Not something for significant for us, but I haven't went out there and bought something and said, you know what? That's for me. And it's just the way that we're wired, yeah. at least <clears throat> as good guys. You know, you're you're wired. Hey, I want to take care of my family. This money could be spent taking care of my family because that is, there's nothing more important to me than making sure my That's wife right. is good, That's making right. sure my kids eat. You know what I mean? And they have the things that they want. Now, I do have things that I enjoy and that I would like to buy for myself, <clears throat> but my desire to provide for them over, over oh, you know, it supersedes that. So we need y'all's help. But if you can knock out a bill and another. And then another bill. Then I can maybe just, maybe <laughs> just buy something from us. <clears throat> just maybe. And let us go buy it alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking because, you know, some wives, they'll be like, you know, they'll make you feel bad for getting. Like, I always go to Waffle House. My wife lets me go to Waffle House by myself. She'll never go to Waffle House with me, mainly because she's the grade. She's not going to go. <laughs> but number two, I can get, I can, the sanitation, the sanitation great, but 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 she knows I'm getting that double waffle, and she knows the she doesn't want to see it. she don't she don't want to <laughs> see it, and the and 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 the face I make when she tells me to get one, if she because she she don't want to see that face. It's it, it's it's like what you mean? You only one, <laughs> number one. Baby. All right, <clears throat> we can get number out of here. Number one gift that you can get for your man. On Christmas, sleep, mm. a nap, a nap. Mm. Just give them, just, just, just. Hey, go to the bedroom. All right, kids, leave them alone. In laws, leave them alone. I'm gonna leave you alone. Turn the lights down low. Okay, turn the soft, uh, relaxing music on. And let that man take a solid nap. Solid. Not no nap that was interrupted. We're talking about Mm-mm. I came Mm-mm. and found you after the nap. Right. Uninterrupted, peaceful sleep. Mm. Let him catch up on some rest. Because I guarantee you, if you've got a good guy, he is working all day, every day. And then after work, he's spending time with you and giving you you know, the things that you need. And then after that, he's grinding on his purpose and his gifts and his calling. And after all of that, 
he might get maybe five or six hours of sleep. And then he gets up and he does it again. And again. Okay. And again. And again and again. The responsibility, the burden of providing for the family rests primarily on his shoulders. Okay. The responsibility to God. Mm. For the, for his family, for the spiritual development and growth of his family, is on his shoulders. <laughs> so if on Christmas Day he could just get a solid nap, let that man catch up on some much needed rest. That would be the most valuable gift that you can give. And, and and I I you know, look for the ladies. I know you guys do a lot as well. You do a lot. You do so much, and you deserve rest as well. If that's the gift that you want, I'm more than happy to give it to you. <laughs> but that's not the. But I just I, I've I got a feeling that that's not what you want. I got a feeling. So I'm not saying that the man needs rest because the woman's not doing anything. Nope, they're doing plenty too. But if that's what you want, if you want a nap for Christmas, I'll give you that. That's not what you guys want. <laughs> You want the gifts. You want the, you know what I mean? And that's fine. I don't need that. Just give me a nap. That's it. I would love to give my wife a nap for Christmas. <laughs> that's so, f- <laughs> man. <laughs> but no, 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 no. Y'all don't want what we, we, you don't want needs. You want wants. Yeah, BD, man, asleep is, oh man, bro. To catch up on rest. Because on average, we get about four or five, I get about four or five hours of sleep. Because I have to use those four hours. I have to use extra hours to because I I got somewhere for us to go. Days like those where you just let us sleep, even if it's an emergency, let us. <laughs> if if it's the apocalypse, I'm going. Let us rest. <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> we'll we'll find out when we wake up. Oh shoot, and then go back to sleep. <laughs> That's how tired we are. <laughs> right. Anyway. All right. Um, I think that's about it for today. Josh, do you have a uh, weekly negative truth? Yeah, man. Uh, I just want to encourage everyone out there who's find it hard, their insecurity, they feel inadequate. Um, the person that gave you the gift gave it to you for a reason, and he sees greatness in you. He don't see greatness in you. He sees the greatness of his spirit in you that will ensure that greatness comes out of you. That's important. Uh, you're not going to be able to do your gift for God's glory and for kingdom advancement without his help, without a humble heart. And for those out there that are doing exceptionally well for your gift and you're making a lot of money, you well known and you're successful. Who's getting the glory for real? If your heart is not leaning towards God being glorified, then when your work is tested by fire, you won't have nothing to show. That's all I got, BD. All right. Well, that's all we've got for today here at the good guys podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Hit that bell so that you get post notifications so you know whenever we drop a new episode of the Good Guys Podcast. Like, comment, share the podcast on your social media platforms. Help us grow here at the Good Guys Podcast. That's what you can get us for Christmas. Uh, get us a subscribe at the Good <clears throat> Guys Podcast. That's all we ask. Yeah, share this. Hey, it's Christmas. This video... If Brandon does what he's supposed to do, we'll be dropped on Christmas Eve. If we have been a gift to you this whole year and you want to give a gift that keeps on giving, watch this with your family. Share this with everyone you know. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff BD says. That's the gift that we'll like from you on this Christmas. Absolutely. Oh, if you want to donate too. If you want, if you want to help us knock out a bill, because our wife ain't going to probably do it this Christmas. If you want to help us knock out a bill... Man, we don't have no link. Go to IamUnplugged.com. <laughs> Give wow. through there and put Good Guys Podcast. Do you have a cash app, BD? Yes, I do. Nah, I ain't going to do that to y'all. It, just, we love you. Merry Christmas. Absolutely. Also, check out the Blue Beast crew oh, yeah. uh, on YouTube. Check out the Blue Beast crew. Hit the subscribe button there as well. That's how you can help BD for Christmas, okay? Other than that, I am a happily married man and a humble father of four. He is Joshua Ezzy. He is also happily married, also known as Slim Rev. Together, we are the Good Guys Podcast. Have a Merry Christmas. We are out. Peace.